As Perez is grabbing his sword, he states to Astana to stop it. Astana shrugs his shoulders and tells Ferentia that if his father was dying for a disease, he wouldn't leave his side for an instant. He also asks her what would low-bred children like her know of duty? Astana adds that there's a reason why she's lowly after all. He further mentions to Ferentia that his mother did say that lowly things will roll around with anyone and then attach themselves to a noble bearing the seed of God knows who. They have no shame. Upon hearing these statements, Ferentia states that this is enough. Astana questions Ferentia about what is it and if he hit a sore spot. He adds that he understands, and that since no one knows where her nomad mother came from, she must have some suspicion. Suddenly, Perez starts to approach Astana to attack him with his sword. However, Ferentia stops him and makes him put it back. Perez looks over at Ferentia to see why she's stopping him. Ferentia then explains to Perez that he doesn't need to draw his sword every time someone makes commentary like that. She adds that she told him that Astana's a waste of time. Upon Astana hearing this, he asks Ferentia what she just called him. As Ferentia bows to Astana, she mentions to him that she will take her words just now to mean that he is truly and greatly concerned for her father. She then approaches Astana and slaps him across the face. Astana is shocked. As he touches his cheek, he questions Ferentia about if she just slapped him. Ferentia replies, Since I have thanked you for your concern, it is only right to return an insult with an appropriate reaction. Upon hearing this response, Astana grits his teeth in anger and states to her that he will tell his majesty everything. He also asks Ferentia about how dare a low-born bastard like her lay a hand on a member of the imperial family. Ferentia agrees with Astana to mention it to his majesty and requests him to do so. This request makes Astana freeze, and he further questions Ferentia for more clarification. Ferentia clarifies by further requesting him to tell his majesty exactly what happened. She adds that she will also be sure to convey exactly what he said about her sick father and about her deceased mother, as well as about her. She will be sure to repeat to her grandfather every single word that he said. This clarification makes Astana flinch. Astana then takes a back step and nervously tries to state something to Ferentia. However, Ferentia interrupts him and tells him that they will be going then. Ferentia also curtsy Astana and excuses herself. Astana tries to stop them, but is unable to. As he is watching them walk away, he mentions to himself that this is not what he meant and that he didn't mean it to go that far. He further starts thinking about how she just keeps ignoring him and that she only spends her time with Perez. As Astana is looking down and depressed, he is speechless. We then transition to the next scene where Ferentia and Perez are walking inside the mansion. Perez states to Ferentia to wait. Ferentia halts and reassures him that she's fine. Perez then asks her if she's crying. As Ferentia is clenching her dress, she disagrees with him and tells him that she isn't going to cry because of someone like him. Not ever. Perez apologies to Ferentia as he was the one who suggested a walk. Ferentia turns around and questions him about what is that his fault. She adds that it's because he's a jerk and a scoundrel. She further mentions to Perez to forget it, as it's not like a rabid dog is selective about who he bites. Ferentia then states to Perez that more importantly, she has a favor to ask. She adds that since it's true that she laid hands on a member of the imperial family, she will be punished. She will probably be put under house arrest. Perez is shocked to hear this. However, Ferentia reassures him that it's fine as she already thought about it before she did it. She adds that she actually thinks it's better since she can stay by her daddy's side without interruption. Ferentia further questions Perez about if it's okay with him if she can borrow a few of the books she couldn't finish earlier. She adds that since she can't finish looking through them all today, she wants to keep looking once she gets home. Upon hearing this question, Perez nods in agreement and starts to believe that he's really useless to Ferentia. Ferentia notices that Perez is making a sad face. She then pats him on the shoulders and asks him why he's making that face. She adds that he should let her pick out which book she wants to take with her and that it isn't like she can take his entire library. We then switch to the next scene where we see Ferentia reading a book. She starts to flip through the pages and is thinking. As she chews on her hand, she wonders where that page was that discussed about Bomnia flowers. 
she further starts to think about how she should have asked Perez to put a bookmark in it. All of a sudden, Ferentia ends up finding the page. As she's reading the page, she learns that Bomnia flowers are only found in the very southern tip of the continent. The flowers, leaves, and roots all have different medicinal properties. Ferentia is amazed upon reading this as she learns that every part of the flower is useful. She also wonders why this plant isn't better known. She further realizes that this country needs to do more research outside of its capital. Ferentia then further starts to read the book and learns that, however, the Bomnia flower is most potent when the flower, leaves, and roots are all used together. While the exact mechanism is unknown, it has a stable amplifying effect on other medicinal herbs when used together. This knowledge makes Ferentia freeze, and she starts to wonder what it means by a stable amplifying effect on other herbs. Ferentia further starts to remember the past where Astira introduced her to a red powder and told her that the red powder is the main ingredient that sets her special ointment apart from other products. Ferentia questioned Astira about if the red powder is really expensive or hard to come by. As Astira scratched her cheek, she responded, Ah, no. This is a common herb around my hometown, but it only blooms for a short time in the spring, and for this kind of use, you'd have to use the flower, leaves, and roots. It's most effective when freshly gathered, but it's hard to preserve in that state, so I dried it and grounded it into a powder before I came to the capital. I didn't have a chance to use it when I was learning about other herbs under my mentor, but I get to use it now. I'm glad that the results came out well. This memory makes Ferentia realize that the missing ingredient that Astira is missing for her daddy's cure is the Bomnia flower. As Ferentia is trembling, she mentions to herself to stay calm as she believes that she has to think this through. She further wonders if the missing ingredient is really the Bomnia flower. We then switch to the next scene where Ferentia is going back home in her carriage. Once they arrive, the coachman states to Ferentia that they've arrived at the Lombardy estate. He also requests her to be careful when stepping out. However, before he's able to finish talking, Ferentia slams open the door and dashes out. The maids are in shock upon seeing this and one of them calls out to her. She also tells her that she will get hurt running like that. Ferentia ignores the maid and instead asks her where Astira is. The maid mentioned to her that they saw her heading towards her study earlier. Meanwhile, the coachman feels a raindrop. Suddenly, it starts to rain heavily, which makes him realize that the monsoon season has begun. We then transition to the next scene, where we see Ferentia running through the halls. The maids requests Ferentia to wait. However, she doesn't listen. As Ferentia continues to run towards Astira, she starts thinking about how she has to confirm this with her. We then see Astira trembling as she's writing something. Suddenly, Estira springs out of her chair as she realizes something and asks the maid if Ferentia has returned. The maid disagrees and states that she wasn't notified about her return. As Estira continues to tremble, she starts thinking about how she needs to tell Ferentia this as soon as possible. She also decides to send her a message, but then realizes that it's already late for that. Estira then starts to sprint of the room and tells the maid that she will wait in front of Ferentia's library. The maid is shocked upon hearing this and questions Astira about her supper. Astira reassures the maid that she's fine. We then switch to the next scene where we see Ferentia huffing. Astira also notices Ferentia. Upon noticing her, Astira bows and apologizes to Ferentia. Ferentia is confused upon hearing this apology. Astira then adds that just as she told her, she went over all of the experiments and herbs she's used so far and she was able to find the last piece of the puzzle that might help them perfect the medicine, except the ingredient she found cannot be obtained. Estira further asks Ferentia if she remembers it as it's the special ingredient used to make the limited edition ointment. Upon hearing this question, Ferentia shouts out Bomnia flowers. Estira is surprised that Ferentia remembered. Ferentia further confirms with Estira about if she's talking about the Bomnia flowers the herb that amplifies the effectiveness of other herbs when its flowers, leaves, and roots are mixed together. Estira questions Ferentia about how does she know that. As Ferentia passes the book to Estira, she mentions to her that it's written in this book. She adds that she was just on her way to check with her. Estira starts to squeeze her hand and agrees with Ferentia. She adds that, however, Bomnia flowers are wild flowers that only grow in the south 
and they're not even in season right now. They might be able to send someone to get them in powder form, but dried bombnia flowers are far less effective than freshly gathered ones. That's why she thinks she had forgotten about them. As Astira starts to get teary-eyed, she states to Ferentia that too many herbs are used to treat Trenbro, so powdered bombnia flowers will not do. She adds that she should have thought of it sooner. If she had thought of it at least around the time her father started to get sick, then maybe they could have saved him. Estira further starts to apologize to Ferentia. As Ferentia grabs Estira's hands, she reassures her that it's fine. She adds that they can get them as she knows where Bomnia flowers are still around. Estira is shocked upon hearing this reassurance and questions Ferentia for an explanation. Ferentia explains that they are at Foylock Palace. She adds that she heard they blossom twice this year and that she just went to see them not too long ago. Ferentia also starts thinking about how they're almost gone now, but it should be fine. Ferentia then further tells Astira that there must be some left still and that they need to send someone to give a letter to Perez. All of a sudden, the both of them hear a loud lightning strike, which shocks the both of them. As Ferentia starts to remember her walk with Perez, she starts to wonder about if the remaining Bomnia flowers will die because of the rain. Ferentia then drops the book as she starts to feel dizzy. She also runs to one of the maids and mentions to them to call for a carriage as they must go to the Foylock Palace immediately. The maid requests Ferentia to calm down. Suddenly, Clarivan comes out of his room upon hearing all of the commotion. He also calls out to Ferentia. Ferentia turns to see who called her and pauses after realizes that it's Clarivan. Clarivan then questions Ferentia about what is going on here. Ferentia grabs Clarivan and shouts at him to grab her a carriage. She adds that the herbs needed to make the medicine for her father are at Foylac Palace. Clarivan states to Ferentia that it's raining. He adds that it's raining so hard. This response makes Ferentia quiver. All of a sudden, the maid grabs Ferentia's shoulder and tells her that it will be faster for a messenger to get there by horse instead of her going by carriage. Clarivan also requests Ferentia to tell him what he should write in the letter. He adds that he will send the fastest horse in the Lombardia estate right now. Upon hearing this request, Ferentia slumps down and says, The flowers. Tell him to bring back Bomnia flowers. Even just a single flower is fine. I need a Bomnia flower that's pristine from root to petal. We then switch to the next scene, where we see Ferentia listening to the thunderstorm from one of the windows, while Clarivan and the maid are standing behind her. Clarivan then tells the maid that she did great. The maid asks him for more clarification. Clarivan clarifies that she sent someone his way quickly, and she tried to stop Ferentia as much as she could. As Clarivan smiles, he adds that she did such a great job. The maid starts to blush upon hearing this clarification. She also mentions to Clarivan that it's her duty as Ferentia's lady-in-waiting. But more than that, she's worried about her. She further adds that she's been sitting in that chair ever since she came back, looking in the direction of the palace, and that she hasn't been eating either. Meanwhile, as Ferentia is biting her nail, she wonders what if the courier spills the box on his way back, or what if there's an accident? She also wonders if the flowers Perez showed her were the last of the Bomnia flowers. All of a sudden, Ferentia notices that the courier has returned. As she looks at the courier more closely, she pauses and wonders if it's Perez. She then jumps out of her chair and runs towards the courier. Upon, the lady-in-waiting and Clarivan noticing this, they call out to her. As Ferentia is running towards the front door, past all of the maids, she believes that there's no way it can be Perez. Once she makes it to the front door, she opens it and calls out to Perez. Upon hearing his name, Perez turns towards Ferentia. The maids also couldn't believe that Perez came here at this hour all by himself. Perez then approaches Tia. Once he is close enough to her, he opens the box in his hand. Upon the box opening, Ferentia realizes that it's the Bomnia flowers. Perez then tells her that he brought her the Bomnia flowers. One of the butlers then states to one of the maids to bring more clothes to dry with. He also commands her to light a fire in the guest room too. The maid understands and agrees with the butler's orders. Meanwhile, Clarivan gives Ferentia a towel to dry Perez with. Ferentia thanks Clarivan. She then starts to dry Perez's hair. As she's drying his hair, she asks him why would he run through the rain like that. Perez replies, I didn't want the rain to kill the remaining flowers. You said you needed them to heal your father. 
Upon hearing this response, Ferentia tells him that he's such a dummy. Perez just chuckles. The maid then mentions to Ferentia that they're ready. Ferentia grabs Perez's hand and states to him that they should go. Perez agrees with her. Suddenly, Ferentia pauses and questions Perez about if he's not even going to ask where they're going. Perez tells Ferentia that he will go anywhere she takes him. Ferentia starts to blush upon hearing this statement and mentions to him that he's a real dummy. One of the maids then states to Perez that she's prepared a warm bath for him and requests him to come this way. As Perez is following the maid, he reassures Tia that he'll be warm in no time. So she should hurry and go since she said she needed fresh bomnia flowers. Upon hearing this reassurance, Ferentia tells Perez that she will come right back. Perez mentions to her that he knows and that she should go on. We then switch to the next scene where we see Ferentia with the box of Bomnia flowers. She starts to run through the halls and notices Estira. Estira also notices Ferentia once she gets closer to her. As Ferentia is huffing, Estira tells her she heard Perez brought the herb himself just now. Upon hearing this statement, Ferentia opens the box to show Estira the fresh Bomnia flowers. Estira becomes shocked and couldn't believe that Perez actually brought Bomnia flowers. Ferentia then mentions to Estira to now save her dad. We then transition to the next scene where the lady-in-waiting states to Ferentia that her father took the potion about ten minutes ago. She adds that they should be seeing its effect in a few hours. Ferentia thanks her lady-in-waiting. The lady-in-waiting further tells Ferentia that she will let her know when her father starts to respond and urges her to rest. However, Ferentia shakes her head in disagreement and mentions to the lady-in-waiting that she doesn't want to be alone. She adds that besides, Perez seems to be coming down with a cold after being out in the rain. As Ferentia is smiling, she further states that he's an important guest who brought the herb for her father. She should take good care of him for what he's done. The lady-in-waiting tells Ferentia that she could never convince her. Ferentia chuckles upon hearing this statement and apologizes to her as she's always working late because of her. The lady-in-waiting reassures Ferentia that this is no problem and that she's happy to be by her side. As the lady-in-waiting bows, she adds that she will be in her father's bedroom. She will come running as soon as something happens. Ferentia thanks the lady-in-waiting and requests her to do exactly that. Once the maid leaves, Ferentia sits beside Perez by the fireplace. The two of them then start to share the blanket. Perez also grabs and squeezes Ferentia's hand. Ferentia further mentions to Perez that they sent someone to Foylac Palace. This news surprises Perez. Ferentia then says, Miss Caitlin and Sir Kylas don't know you're here, right? There's no way they'd let you ride a horse through this rain. How did you bring the flower? I'm sure there weren't too many left to begin with, and with this pouring rain, the rest must have fallen too. As Ferentia clenches her lips, she confirms with Perez about if he dug through the entire Foylac Palace garden as soon as he received her letter as it's gigantic. She adds that it must have been pitch dark with the sun down and the rain. Yet he dug up the Bomnia flowers with his bare hands to make sure its root wouldn't get hurt. Upon hearing this question, Perez smiles to confirm with Ferentia. Ferentia becomes shocked and asks Perez why he did it. She adds that he's the second son of the emperor. He could have asked someone else to find the flowers. He could have come safely in a carriage, covered from the rain. Yet he dug up the ground with his bare hands and rode a horse through the rain. She further questions Perez about what if something happened to him, all because of a letter she sent. Upon hearing this question, Perez calls out Ferentia's name and questions her about if he was helpful. Ferentia tells him yes, very much so. Perez is glad to hear this and states to her that that's all he wants. We then switch to the next scene where we see Ferentia and Perez laying beside one another. As Ferentia is gazing at Perez, she mentions to herself that she doesn't want to be alone right now. However, she could still hear a nagging voice in the back of her head. Ferentia further starts to wonder about if the Bomnia flowers are the right answer. She also wonders what if she needs some other ingredients, and if she will find other answers in time before her father's last remaining hand and lung become hardened and before his heart stops. Ferentia then starts to see a dream where her father passes away, and they are coving his face. However, Ferentia yells out not to cover her father's face and to not take him. All of a sudden, Ferentia's lady-in-waiting wakes her up. 
Ferentia gasps upon waking up and realizes that she went to sleep. As she gets up, she questions her lady-in-waiting about what happened. Suddenly, Ferentia notices all of the maids murmuring to one another. She also wonders why the house is so loud as it isn't even daybreak yet. Ferentia then quickly gets out of bed and realizes that something must have happened. As Ferentia is running out of the room, the lady-in-waiting calls out to her, but she doesn't listen. Ferentia then continues to run towards her father's room. As she's running, she realizes that she can't see and can't read anyone's faces. Once Ferentia makes it to her father's room, she slams it open and barges into the room. Ferentia notices everyone around the bed and prays that her dad is okay. All of a sudden, Ferentia's father calls out Tia's name. Tia halts upon hearing her name. Suddenly, she starts to stumble. Luckily, her father catches her from falling by using his right hand. Ferentia notices this and asks him about how he could use his right hand. As Ferentia's father is smiling, he responds, It seems like Astira's new potion is taking effect. Look, my sensation's been coming back slowly, starting just a few hours after I took it. Tia, I think Dad will be fine now. I mean it. It'll be fine. Tia starts to cry upon hearing this response and starts to hug her father. Meanwhile, Ferentia's father reassures her that it's all better now and that everything is fine. It'll be all fine now. We then learn that after the cure was found, it took about two months for Ferentia's father to feel better. In the meantime, many things happened. First, Perez caught a nasty cold, and he was taken back to the Foilac Palace. Ferentia also fainted shortly after due to stress and fatigue, which caused a stir at the mansion for a while. So, she spent the entire house arrest period lying sick in bed. Ferentia's father couldn't believe it. It was also discovered that the doctor was the one who leaked the news about Ferentia's father's illness. There were plenty of witnesses, so he was thrown out of the mansion immediately. That left the Lombardi family without a personal physician. It was decided that the new physician will be Astira, once she graduates from the academy. However, there was something else which was the biggest change that happened. We then switch to the next scene, where we see the grand meeting hall for aristocrats. Lord Anginus notices Ferentia's grandfather and asks him what he's doing here. Ferentia's grandfather states to Lord Anginus that he figured he had enough rest for the past few years. He adds that he decided to show some interest in running the empire again. Upon hearing this response, the chairman tells Ferentia's grandfather that he will be the head of the council. However, Ferentia's grandfather disagrees and mentions to him that he didn't return to take on such a heavy responsibility like that. He adds that he's too old for that now, and that he just came for something simple. The chairman questions Ferentia's grandfather for more clarification. As Ferentia's grandfather is grinning, he states to the chairman that it's just that there's a promise he made to someone before. He also starts thinking about how Lord Anginus should continue to regret this moment going forward, and to continue to think that he shouldn't have touched his son's business that time. Lord Anginus gasps. Ferentia's grandfather further starts thinking about how he should look forward to them, as he will certainly make it happen. Meanwhile, Lord Anginus starts to feel chills going down his spine. Ferentia's grandfather then sits down and says, There's no need to delay this any longer. Let us start the meeting right away. I hear most of the items on today's agenda are from the West. Why don't we look into them in detail? The aristocrats are surprised upon hearing this statement. After a while, the meeting ends, and the chairman concludes today's meeting. As Ferentia's grandfather rises up, all of the other aristocrats start to talk to him and want to have supper with him or try to invite him to a party. Meanwhile, Lord Anginus is trembling since he found out that all of his proposals have been declined. Ferentia's grandfather then apologizes to the aristocrats and tells them that he needs to discuss it some other time as he has a very important matter to attend to today. One of the aristocrats questions him about if he has a meeting his majesty. Ferentia's grandpa mentions to the aristocrat that it's his granddaughter's birthday. The aristocrats are confused upon hearing this response. Ferentia's grandfather further points at the chairman and states to him that he's late. He also commands him to hit the gavel. As the chairman is hitting the gavel, he tells everyone that the meeting is adjourned. Suddenly, the aristocrats look for Ferentia's grandfather and realize that he's vanished. Lord Anginus also realizes that this changes the flow of the aristocratic council. 
We then switch to the next scene where we see Ferentia's lady-in-waiting combing Ferentia's hair. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting then states to her that she must be in a good mood since she normally can't sit still when she brushes her hair. Ferentia agrees with her lady-in-waiting and tells her that it's a special day today. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting then asks Ferentia what she wishes to do first now that she can see the world as much as she wants. Ferentia starts to think upon hearing this question. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting adds that she heard Lorraine visited a flower garden on the outskirts of their duchy as soon as she turned eleven. She also mentions to her that the twins burst out of the city on their horses on their eleventh birthday. As for Belazac, she is unable to remember. Ferentia states to her lady-in-waiting that he probably dragged Astalia with him and went hunting. She also starts thinking about how her lady-in-waiting is exactly how she expected, as she doesn't pay attention to anything unnecessary. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting then questions Ferentia about what is her plan. She also requests to know as she can make arrangements. Upon hearing this request, Ferentia tells her lady-in-waiting that she wants to go shopping. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting starts giving her some ideas on what to buy, like buying some jewelry or buying some delicious foods. Meanwhile, Ferentia decides that she will buy a whole mine where precious stones come from or a restaurant that makes the best dishes. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting further adds that it'll be good to look around Sadak Street. Ferentia agrees with her lady-in-waiting and mentions to her that this is exactly what she's doing. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting states to Ferentia that she can be quite greedy. As Ferentia is smiling, she starts thinking about how she agrees with her lady-in-waiting and plans to take over all of them. Once the lady-in-waiting is finished getting Ferentia ready, she lets Ferentia know and requests her to stand up. Ferentia stands up and looks beautiful. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting also starts to blush and tells Ferentia that she looks so pretty. Upon hearing this compliment, Ferentia chuckles and thanks her lady-in-waiting. She adds that she knows she worked really hard for it. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting then says, So this is the limited edition dress that's going on sale in every clothing store in the Empire tomorrow? Look how beautiful it is! But they're only making 200 dresses per series? No way! Upon hearing this statement from her lady-in-waiting, Ferentia starts thinking about how she knew Clarivan wouldn't even tell her lady-in-waiting their trade secret and realizes that he's meticulous. Ferentia also explains to her lady-in-waiting that this dress was made to commemorate her birthday, and it makes it even more special since it's the first of the limited edition series. She adds that they've only made 100 dresses for this series, and that the rarer a dress's design is, the more valuable it becomes. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting is shocked upon hearing this explanation. We further learn that ready-made dresses are common, and anyone can buy one at any time. To distinguish this series, and in time with the release of the new premium line targeting aristocrats, Ferentia's father's clothing store added another idea. It is called the Limited Edition. Starting tomorrow, the day after Ferentia's birthday, every clothing store of Ferentia's father across the empire will start selling a limited number of a very expensive dress series. The exact design of each edition is a secret. So are the materials involved in it. Unlike the premium line, which can be customized to anyone's personal preference, the limited edition's design is already complete as is. But that's why the limited edition is special and valuable. Ferentia has also heard that people have already started to line up in front of the stores. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting then mentions to Ferentia that she's too cruel. She adds that she knows it's a limited edition, but this makes it way too difficult for her to buy one. Ferentia states to her lady-in-waiting that since she's worked so hard doing her hair, she will give her a tip. Ferentia then whispers in her lady-in-waiting's ear to go to branch number three in the Imperial City. She adds that the third branch is located relatively far from where the noble families live, so her chances are a little better. However, it's just a tip. So she should better hurry, otherwise she will be late. Ferentia's lady-in-waiting is surprised upon hearing this tip. As she clenches her hands, she tells Ferentia that she understands and that she will send a maid from the Dillards right away. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. The person turns out to be Ferentia's father. As he starts peeking from the door, he questions Ferentia about if he can come in. Upon Ferentia noticing her father, she rushes towards him and gives him a hug. As Ferentia's father is hugging his daughter, he mentions to her that she's almost eleven, 
but she's still a long way from being an adult. Ferentia agrees with her father and states that she wants to stay by his side and be his baby forever. We then learn that thanks to Astira's medicine, Ferentia's father became completely free of the Trenbro disease. In just a week, his paralysis was completely gone. He's lost a little weight, but Astira said that he's been completely cured. Ferentia's father also has gone through tasks that had been put on hold while he was rehabilitating. He wanted to show that his clothing store could never be shaken. Ferentia's father then says to Ferentia, It seems like you're ready to go to the party. If it's all right with you, could you give your daddy a bit of your time? Don't you want to see what I got you for your birthday? As Ferentia is smiling, she tells her father that she would love to. We then transition to the next scene where Ferentia and her father enter into a room. As Ferentia is looking around, she is amazed. Ferentia's father also mentions to her that he hopes it's to her liking. Ferentia then turns around and questions her father about if this is her house and how it's so pretty. Ferentia's father agrees and explains to her that the small room she sees over there is a guest room. He adds that the room she's facing is her bedroom and the room on the left is her library. Ferentia starts to think upon hearing this explanation. Ferentia's father further asks her if she would like to take a look inside. Ferentia agrees with him. Once they are inside her library, Ferentia's father states to her that he's moved her library from the main hall to here. He adds that he figured this makes it easier for her to use it as much as you want. Ferentia tells her father that this is incredible. Ferentia's father then further mentions to her that it's a room reserved only for her to use. No one can enter here without her permission. He adds that it makes him sad that she will be a little farther from him, but considering how busy things will become from now on, this is better. As Ferentia's father pats Ferentia on the head, she starts to feel touched. Ferentia also starts thinking about how she could never lie to Dad. We further learn that as Ferentia promised her father last time, she finally told him a few things when the timing seemed right. They were simple things, such as why she sent Shannonette to Madame Sir Shaw and how long she has known Perez. But it seemed like Ferentia's father could see through her with what she told him, judging from the fact that he asked her for her opinions about decisions concerning his clothing store. That's how the idea about the limited edition was born, too. As Ferentia hugs her father, she reassures him that she will come downstairs often, so he won't feel lonely. Ferentia's father agrees with his daughter. He also wishes her a happy birthday and states that he wanted to tell her that before anyone else. Ferentia thanks her dad and tells him that this feels like a dream. Ferentia also starts thinking about how her father is by her side on her 11th birthday and realizes that she saved his life. Ferentia's father then kisses her on the forehead and questions her about if she should go then. As her father puts out his hand to grab hers, he adds that a lot of people are waiting for her. Ferentia smiles and agrees with her father. Please make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members. Why not watch another manhole recap on my channel by clicking on this video right here?